time for me to mute everybody and we're going to get started. Give me a fresh tip. Give me a thin. Thin receive. Well, good morning on this glorious fall day. This is uh, for all, those of us here in Vermont, and I know everyone isn't, but for those of us here in Vermont, it is an absolute stunner. It, yesterday was gorgeous. Today is beautiful, cool, a little cooler, but it's all, the colors are magnificent. And it is um, certainly a time when you can feel God's presence um, in all that beauty. Uh, so I'm glad you're all here with us today. Uh, just a reminder that this service is being recorded. We'll appear on uh, GNAT TV and on our YouTube channel later in the week. Uh, I'd also want to extend an invitation. Uh, we have started a Bible study. It just started this past Friday, so you haven't missed much, but we're doing the Book of Ruth. Um, it's a short book, so it's probably going to be a fairly quick study, only a few more weeks, but we'd love to have you join us if you would like to be a part of that. Um, no prior knowledge of the book of Ruth is required, and um, just having a Bible handy is all we ask of you, and it's via Zoom. It's at 9 a.m. on Friday, so just um, send, shoot me an email or give me a call, and I'm happy to add you, um, send you the uh, information that has the connection so for, of how you can join us. That's all we have at this particular moment um, as far as announcements go. Uh, so. Let us begin our service of worship uh, by singing together our opening hymn. Mary's going to play two verses, and we're going to sing together, Seek the Lord. Mary, please unmute yourself. You're still muted. There you go. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have invited and welcomed us to this time of worship as we gather from so many different places. You draw us away from the idols we create to take your place. When we come together, we sense that there is nothing in life that can substitute for a vital relationship with you. Yet, we are only dimly aware of who you are. All the mysteries of the universe are in your hands, yet you have made yourself known among the people of this earth. We catch glimpses of your work among us and are amazed. 
we want to meet you again today as for the first time. Touch us, remake us, help us to stand firm in the faith. Amen. Let us now join together and say the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time that we get to share uh, the celebrations of our lives as well as uh, those things that are weighing on us. Today, uh, we lift up one church in particular, and it's our friends at the Congregational Church of Rupert and their pastor, uh, Steve Barry. Um, by way of concerns, prayers are asked for um, Jeff's friend, Penny, on the fairly sudden loss of her sister, Joanne. We would pray healing prayers for Danielle, who's facing multiple health issues. Um, we also lift up one of our neighbors um, in here in our community, Mike, who lost his home last week to fire. Uh, our prayers are with all of those who are affected by Hurricane Delta. And uh, we also lift up those who continue to be affected by the fires out west. And I'm particularly mindful of one of my seminary friends, Kimberly, who's, who had just got to come back to her home after having to evacuate a couple weeks ago, and now she may have to re-evacuate. So that's the reality um, for many folks out west. And so we hold them in prayer. If you have a joy or concern you would like to add, if you could unmute yourself and just say your name so I can know that you'd like to add something. Phyllis? Phyllis, go ahead. Uh, prayers of healing for Georgine, who had knee surgery, and a friend who had ophthalmic surgery. Thank you. Others? Karen? Go ahead, Karen. Um, Prayers of peace and calm for Bernice, who is going to have a procedure coming up. Okay. Thank you. Others? Any additional ones? Well, then... Please join me in a spirit of prayer as we lift these and the ones that we hold silently in our hearts. Everlasting God, you are the source of our common life. You bring us together, you send us apart, and you bring us together again. You are faithful to us when we seek your presence. You are faithful to us when we don't know which way to turn in our wandering. You are faithful to us when we are nonchalant in our attention to you. You are faithful in times of struggle, pain, grief, and loss. Today, we lift up those we are concerned for to your loving embrace, including all of those who knew and loved Joanne and especially her sister Penny on her death. We also lift up today healing prayers for Danielle, for Georgine, for one friend after eye surgery, for Bernice. And we also lift up Mike, who has lost his home and is trying to rebuild, for all of those who were in Delta's path and are dealing with the aftermath. And we also continue to lift up those out west, and particularly Kimberly and her household on all as the wildfires continue to destroy many places and create troubling conditions. Oh God, often 
we get things just like we want them, and then something happens that throws everything into a different light forever. In the lean times and in the abundant times, remind us that all time is your time. Today, we especially give thanks for the blessing of the Congregational Church of Rupert and their pastor, Steve, and for the beauty that autumn brings us and the appreciation we have for to get to live in places where there is such beauty right outside our windows. In this time of change, help us recognize what is essential to our common life as a community of faith. Your voice, O oh God, is our map. We know that we live in the secure hand of your promise for a redemptive future. But sometimes when we cannot see the road ahead, it's hard to trust your promise. As we travel together, help us recover I, our identity as your people. May we listen carefully when we hear our calling, when we hear things like, live now, you are the church, you are on mission with me, you need each other. Christ needs your hands and feet in the world. God, empower us for the future with all we need to be the church today. Amen. Now is the time that I remind us all that um, we are the church together, even though we're apart, and that church definitely needs your support. And so I would ask that you consider making your gift either electronically or by mail. And I thank you for your generosity to our church. I would now ask Mary to offer um, two verses of Great is Thy Faithfulness as we sing along from our homes. I would now, now ask Karen Underhill to uh, unmute herself and offer our scripture reading for the day. Thank you, Kathy. Um, the reading for today is um, Exodus 32, 1 through 14. And when I first read it, it kind of put me in mind to exactly what's happening in our world today. And um, the turmoil and the questioning and the the rioting 
And this is pretty much what is happening in, in these, this chapter. Um, it's, it takes place three months after Moses took the slaves out of Egypt. And um, so here we go. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountains, he had been up there with God for 40 days and 40 nights. They gathered around Aaron, who was Moses' brother, and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing, and bring them to me. So all the people took off their gold earrings and brought them to Aaron. And he took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. <clears throat> then they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day, the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterward, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. Then the Lord said to Moses, go down because your people whom you've brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. How soon we forget, huh? They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now, leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. O oh Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will never be their inher and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Thank goodness. Blessings on these words. Thank you, Karen. It might have been the arguing, arguing over whose turn it was to empty the dishwasher. It could have been the last minute request for cupcakes for tomorrow's school bake sale or the 23 shoes. And it was always an odd number laying around that someone was bound to trip over before they would voluntarily pick any of them up. And they were definitely not picking up any of our brother's shoes. I clearly remember my mother's patience fraying as she was the one at home with all seven of us kids during the week with her only escape being her job as a nurse at a hospital on weekends while my father was at work that sometimes took him away for a night or two at least once a month. We certainly heard the wait till your father gets home, but it was what happened when my father walked in the door at supper time that was the true measure of how fed up my mom was with our shenanigans and the perceived threat that we would soon be living in a one parent home that had the power to send us scurrying to our rooms and our suddenly urgent homework assignments. When she had reached the end of her rope and mom started out down the list of all of our wrongdoings, we would be referred to my father as your kids and that was never a good sign. 
after all they'd been through, here God is telling Moses to come down off that mountain and take care of your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt. That's one sure sign that God is experiencing a divine fit of rage because only a short time earlier he was saying, I am the Lord your God who, br who brought you out of Egypt. God here is on a tear. The people of Israel have made this journey of trust with Moses and escaped the bondage in Egypt. The sea parted for them and they had been given manna and water and promised a new home. And most importantly, they were free. So much has happened to and for them with Moses as God's agent. God then goes full throttle, even resorting to name calling when he refers to them as stiff necked which meant he was comparing them to oxen who would be drawing a plow, a plow. And if the plowman wanted them to turn or to keep a straight path when they were deviating from it, he would refer to them as hard of neck or stiff necked, which basically meant they were stubborn or hard to lead. Maybe it isn't such a stretch for us to relate to a people who are feeling alone and scared. They desperately wanted a God to follow. In this case, any God would do, even one of their own making. They wanted to be saved. Of course, they could have taken responsibility for themselves or gone looking for God on their own. And isn't it fascinating that none of them followed Moses up the mountain? They wanted a God, but not the intimidating kind, one they made for themselves must seem more tame and somehow manageable. And Moses takes the heat from God, who just wants to be left alone, and he's even willing to bribe Moses to help make that happen by promising to make of him a great nation. God thinks the best solution is the people's destruction. Maybe he wants a do-over. But Moses pleads their case by reminding God of God's greatness and of the promises made to their forefathers. Moses focuses on getting God to not act in anger and bring disaster on God's people. Amazingly, Moses changes God's mind. To change a mind with humans is hard enough, but it's not for lack of trying. This week on our trip to the Finger Lakes, um, I was struck by the many, many campaign signs, often with one neighbor um, in support of one candidate, and then their next door neighbor has had the other candidate sign up, which got me thinking of all the debates and all of the energy and money that goes into elections and the effort to not just get out the vote, but to get folks to vote a certain way by appealing to hearts in order to change minds. Maybe that's what Moses was doing with God. In one of my morning devotionals this week, I read the present culture of angry partisan politics that exists on both the left and the right is far more effective at making us feel morally superior than it is at changing anyone's mind. There certainly are plenty of events in the news that remind us of, of how short of God's will we as a human race have fallen. And still, God, even an angry or frustrated God, remains with us. We continue to be God's people and to be claimed as God's own in spite of the mess humankind has made of so much of the world, idols and all. The good news is that God abides. And when we feel our most alone, the psalmist reminds us, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And remember me, O oh Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you deliver them, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory in your heritage. Thank goodness. God can change God's mind for all of our sake. Amen.
I now invite Mary to play our closing hymn, um, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. As we go out into this beautiful day, I'd ask you to take this blessing with you. Almighty One, give us inner peace, a closeness to you. Give us clarity to know what faces us. Give us heart to love one another and you. Give us energy and focus to do your work in this fragmented world. Let us go now in peace to serve you and your people. Amen. And if you'd like to unmute yourself and say anything, feel free. Everyone have a great week. Yes, you too. Stay yes. Well. Have a great Thank week, you everyone. Too. Bye, everybody. Wash your Bye, hands. Everyone. Yes. Wear a mask. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Don't take yeah. candy from strangers. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Have a great week. Thank mm -hmm. you.